right, uh, so I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, well, first of all, how many of you have a website? Put your hands up. Yeah? A couple? Great. How many of you actually generate leads or sales online for your business? Cool. Yep, there's a few of you. So how many of you actually pay for your advertising online? So a couple of less hands, yep. Yeah. And how many have actually been disappointed in the past with the results you get? Really? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, a lot of the time, you know, you get people to do stuff with Google uh, where they feel like there's an opportunity, you know, and opportunity comes and people sort of contemplate and really the opportunity ends up knocking on somebody else's door. Really what I found is that in order to succeed online, you really need to be smart. And smart is really an abbreviation for our process. I mean, look, we, we try to make things as simple as we can, and I think smart really puts it together in a nice uh, perspective. So being smart online really is all about strategy. It's all about having the right message. It's all having uh, the ability to advertise properly, measure your results, and basically com consistently improve what you've got, so test and measure. And uh, really, I want to take you through this process today and basically explain to you a little bit more about what we actually do. Because, look, all the technical si side is great, and I love the mobile statistics and everything, but look, personally, I find it a little bit overwhelming. If you were to advertise and get, let's say, another 10 leads per month, what would that mean to your business? Would that mean more business? Would that mean time wasted? What would 10, 10 leads per month mean to you? Anyone? Sorry? Money. OK, fair enough. I just want you to think about that, because sometimes people don't realize what's actually possible. And anyone advertising online, I really would like you to think about some clear goals before you start. Because look, setting a goal of 10 leads per month from your advertising campaign, I think, is a nice number to work with. You can easily you know, process two to three inquiries per week and at least see how well that's all going. Wouldn't you agree? Yep. OK. So my goal today is really to uh, teach you about the concepts of digital marketing that, as, as we understand it to uh, educate you on the point of difference concept. I mean, you guys all know it. You guys all seen it, but sometimes it just takes a little bit of you know, processing to really understand how you can apply that to your business. And I guess, uh, yeah, you, you really want to know some of the effective tactics that you could easily uh, apply to your business, your website, to generate those 10 inquiries or even more. Cool? So who am I? Uh, I'm a digital marketing strategist, and I've been doing this stuff for quite some time. Uh, recently been awarded the Google Premier Partner Badge. Um, we also do Infusionsoft, and uh, we could probably talk about that separately, but it's a fairly complex CRM that we um, support. I have been doing this stuff still uh, since 2004, which is pretty much the rise of Google AdWords, which is yeah, quite some time now. Uh, I'm a managing director of Eureasy Web Solutions, means that I'm actually involved in the business as well as uh, you know, processing all, all the, all the, um, the growth of the business. Uh, I'm also a best-selling author. Um, I wrote a chapter in a very uh, good book called Our Internet Secrets, which actually hit the chart. So yeah, that's a bit of an achievement there. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got a couple of other ventures um, happening along the side. And I also like to consider myself a frequent traveler. Sometimes you, know, you see these people speak, and there's no real stuff to these people. I really would like to share a little bit, something a little personal. You know? Over the last three years, I've been to a number of places. I mean, I'm just going to put up some random names there, but uh, I actually do a lot of travel. And um, I'm actually quite proud of that. So, for example, I'm not sure if you can see that quite well, but that's um, actually Acropolis. That's Athens. Anyone been to Athens? I'm sure my lovely wife has been. She's just sitting right there. Give her a, give her a warm welcome. <laughs> there you go. Um, I'm sure you all know this place. And uh, b judging by another accent, um, by birth I'm Russian, but I've actually been in Australia for almost 20 years, uh, visiting my homeland last year. Um, do you guys know what that place is? Anyone been to Paris? Yeah? OK. Notre Dame de Paris. So that's last year as well. And this is just recent, uh, Queenstown. So I do like to travel, and I'm actually quite proud of that as well. So in terms of my successes, I guess one of the uh, things um, I've achieved, and look, IT degree is nothing really to be proud of, but you, you got a lot of um, temptations to quit everything and just start doing the work. And you hear about a lot of successful people, how their dropouts that went and became successful then finished stuff. Well, I actually finished my degree first. Um, my first project that I ever worked on online uh, generated $250,000 in the first year. I actually should have put US in there as well. And back in 2005, I'm not sure if you guys can remember the exchange rate, but it was about 1 to 60 cents or something like that. So it's actually quite substantial. Um, worked with thousands of uh, business throughout the last 12 years. Um, and we've actually uh, been very lucky to work with some people that have actually been able to grow the business. 
well, the reason why I say lucky is because you know, we do our part, we do the strategy, we do the consulting, but really it takes the business to do the sales and the processing to grow. Um, over the last 12 months, uh, we've been able to double our business and a um, huge thank you to our partners and my mentors as well. And uh, in terms of your easy solutions, we work with uh, clients nationally and internationally as well. We've got two offices, one here in Brisbane, Wollongabba, if you like to swing by, give us a call sometime, and one in Melbourne. And we've got 11 uh, staff across the two offices, plus uh, we've got a couple of contractors as well. Um, as you know, we've recently got the Google Premier Partner Badge. And really, besides all the technical terms, what it really means is that we are probably in the top 10% of all the Google company globally. So we must have done something right there. Um, according to what Cam's telling me uh, through our meetings, we've got some of the best search and uh, mobile campaigns uh, in the country. And um, look, uh, it's very difficult for me to compare ourselves for, with other companies, but you know, the stats that we get are, uh, they've got a lot of green on, let's just put it that way. Um, our conversion rates with our campaigns uh, range from anywhere from 4 to 18%. Uh, and if you know much about conversion rates, that's actually quite high. And uh, what we offer is basically conversion-based uh, online marketing. So I don't really like to take someone's website and just do Google AdWords for the sake of driving traffic. I really want to make a big impact and actually get the traction happening. So let's talk about our uh, smart process in a little bit more detail because I'm sure that's, that's what you guys really want to know. And look, the smart process, you know, sounds good. It's got some big words. Let's make it a little bit more practical. So let's translate this into smart process being landing pages, the point of difference, or USP. And by the way, in case you're wondering, it actually maps uh, those uh, five words. Um, Google AdWords is a traffic driving strategy or marketing. Goals and KPIs for results and Google Analytics for fine tuning. So let's go with that. In terms of strategy, I'm going to talk about landing pages today. Now, who's done a landing page before? OK, a couple of people. Do you guys not know what a landing page is? Anyone? Everyone knows what a landing page is. Great. That makes my life so much easier. Cool. So the whole idea of a landing page is really to be short and concise in terms of presenting your unique selling proposition. And my next slide actually covers the unique selling proposition in case you're wondering what that's all about. Now, really what we want to do is we want to present that page to the right audience at the right time and make sure that people actually can relate to the message. Now, Google is great because it actually helps us connect the relevance, actually rewards us with lower costs in terms of advertising. So the whole thing basically connects into one big model. In terms of uh, landing pages themselves, um, there are single-tier and multi-tier landing pages. What I mean by that is single-tier is someone basically just goes in, puts an inquiry or calls, and that's the end of the story. Multi-tier is where someone basically puts a, um, let's say, details, and that, then those details get processed further into a funnel, and then basically people will end up uh, becoming a prospect. And I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Now, um, this is a, uh, an example of a landing page we've done recently for a carpet cleaner, uh, David Pye. My, this, this page might actually look very simple, but the conversion rate on this particular page ranges anywhere from 16 to 22%. Now, if you're not familiar with conversion rates, uh, just to give you a bit of a comparison, that's like one in six people visiting the actual page. So normally, if you've got a website and you just drive traffic to your homepage, which I'm sure all of you have done, Twenty-two percent. That's huge. That's massive. And especially if you know that every click or every visit is costing you, let's say, five dollars to bring them there, you can do the maths from there. Um, this is another one we did, and this is uh, a template uh, by Lead Pages. In case you're wondering of the platform for a registering of a, a property event that we've um, advertised recently. Uh, now, this is one of our favorite uh, clients, uh, ConveyancingSolicitors.com.au. Their landing page actually became their homepage because it was converting so well. And you can certainly have a look at that. Uh, and this is uh, an example of a two-tier page. So we work a lot with um, RTOs uh, that are basically getting people to register for all sorts of courses. As you can imagine, people don't take action straight away. They need to be taken through a process or educated. So what happens here is someone basically registers their interest rather than basically registering specifically to a course. And then they get followed up by, uh, uh, by a sales rep. And at the same time, once they register, they basically get additional marketing material given to them. The reason why you do something like that is because you want to educate your client and you want to really get the most out of the conversation. Last thing you want is to have a really complex sales process where when the client puts the inquiry through, you've got nothing to connect via. You, know, you really want to be able to relate to a couple of the points that you give to them. So look, everyone's business is very different, but sometimes things are not as straightforward as you might think. You know, 
getting, getting a plumber or let's say an electrician organized might be really straightforward. But if you go to let's say a commercial fit out or, some, or something like that, I guess there are some questions that you might want to ask. So depending on your sales process and your advertising, you really need to find ways to connect the dots or educate people before you actually start your sales process. So I guess with landing pages, the rule of thumb is really to keep it simple. Um, I've seen a lot of people trying to put everything into a landing page and expect it to really do the magic. Well, it just doesn't work like that. Um, I would imagine that uh, you guys got some sort of an offer if you're running a business. And if you don't, I strongly um, urge you to come up with an offer, something attractive to your audience. Um, basically, minimize your call to actions. And the call to actions being things like, call us now in the phone number. Or it could be something like, fill out this inquiry. So don't have, fill out an inquiry newsletter, sign up to our, you know, something else, Facebook, and then your phone number. It's just going to confuse people. So one or two call to actions is really what you want to have on your landing page. Obviously, you want to have uh, targeted traffic, but you also want traffic to match the actual message. So if you're advertising specifically for, let's say, seven-day service, your landing page needs to reflect that as well. Last thing you want is people to see an ad that says one thing and, you know, in essence, something else where, where they actually come to your website. Um, with landing pages, I would aim for conversion rate between 7 and 15%. If you're getting below that, you really need to change your message or basically change the whole format of the whole thing. And strongly, I would encourage you to do some A-B split testing. Anyone familiar with the A-B split testing process? Yes? No? Basically, what you do is you... I don't like the color of that button, or I don't like the way this looks. It's not about your opinion. If, you, if it's all driven by your opinion, then you're doing it wrong altogether. And look, this is really important. I know some of you have got strong brands and branding guidelines around things, but you have to put that aside and make sure you find that fine line between your brand and the actual uh, design of the actual landing page. In terms of automating the actual system, uh, there are a number of systems you can pick. We work with uh, ClickFunnels, Leadpages, and Unbounds. Um, more specifically, lead pages. I just find it's really, really simple. And all it is um, is basically a template, and you follow and pick the elements that you want. Now, from my personal experience, the key elements of a landing page would be something like a headline, the offer, and then basically things like social proof, which could be testimonials or video. If you got that sort of stuff on your landing page, usually that basically checks all the boxes, because you want people to see your offer, understand that you're a real business, and basically have substance and feedback. So in, in essence, if you got those things, everything should go, um, should go fairly smooth. So point of difference. Now, this is a big, uh, I guess, subject, and I've only got limited time to talk about it. But really, it's all about how to differ from your competitors. Um, a lot of the time, you know, people come and basically say, OK, we've got this strong competitor. We want to do exactly like them, or we want to do what they do. Just we're not interested in, in terms of you know, what these guys do. We just basically want to get you know, results like them or better. Look, that's usually like recipe for disaster because you've got no idea exactly how these guys follow up from their process, nor the process might actually resonate with the team or the actual business itself. So I find that it's very important to work on the point of difference of your business and basically focus it around the things that you specialize in. I mean, we work a lot with tradies, and every tradie business is quite different. People enjoy certain things. They get complimented on certain things. And I think that should be all tied into the actual copy and the offer. So. I mean, if, 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 some of your compliments, if some of your compliments come from uh, clients on you know, things you do different or you've done something so, so well, use that. That's, that's original marketing material that basically has been given to you. Um, I guess some convenience options as well. Uh, a lot of the businesses we work with, you know, um, they've got online booking. And it's very important to use that within your marketing because it makes things a lot more convenient. If someone is using their mobile, this is going to save them a lot of time to put their appointment through or something like that. Uh, free
pick certain places where parking is easy, especially if it's within the CBD. Wouldn't you agree? Like Brisbane's becoming such a big, big city and it's so busy now and parking is just through the roof. If you see that there's free parking, that could influence your decision. Available seven days. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if you guys, you know, much into property and stuff, but most of the hunting uh, for houses happens on the weekends. And uh, services that, that are working closely with property related uh, subjects, it, it's very easy for them to connect to people that basically offer their services seven days a week, like conveyancing, for example, or anything to do with property investment advice. So unique selling point is really an extension to a point of difference. And it'd be things like price bid guarantee or same day service. And a lot of these things, um, you know, you sort of take for granted, like no call out fee for tradies. I mean, while it makes sense, there are companies that actually charge a call out fee. So putting that in your advertising makes a big difference. Um, getting into priority list and stuff especially if you're mining data, like if you want to build a newsletter. And by the way, don't call it a newsletter. People don't really like subscribing to things anymore. You know, you have to really create a little bit of, a little bit of priority, a little bit of a wow experience. Money back guarantees. I'm sure most of your businesses would offer something like that. Putting that in your advertising really reinforces the message. And I guess uh, if you're looking for value-based upsells, it's good to include that as well. Like, for example, it'd be something like, you know, second appointment, half price, or, you know, get a discount if you refer a friend. You know, you just have to put something else in there that makes the person think, wow, you know, they, there is um, an incentive to refer this business to other people. Make sense? Cool. So advertising. So let's talk about Google AdWords. I mean, that's the main reason why we're here. Everyone wants to know more about AdWords. We find that uh, people struggle to identify the networks in, in terms of reaching people. So I've sort of done a little bit of a breakdown for general businesses. And when I say general, it's service-based businesses that have been around for two or more years that have proof of concept, which means that you guys know how to, do, how to do your business properly. Now, one thing I have to say is that we actually don't work with startups anymore because I find with startups, it's really difficult to get these people to a point where they can actually start converting clients. So we actually work only with people who have got proof of concept. Cool? So, in terms of uh, advertising, the way I would normally split it up is I'd, I'd probably delegate 85% to search because it really makes your point of difference stand out. And besides that, it actually requires someone to take action. So someone actually types something into Google and when they see your point of difference, it's more like a response. So. Last thing you want is your ad to look exactly the same as everybody else's. And for some reason, people still do that. I don't get it. It's not a, a matter of being number one, unfortunately, as much as you might think. I think it's a matter of being in the top four and really stand out with your message. Because you want people to consciously pick you from those four positions. Remarketing. You guys know much about remarketing? Basically, it's repeating your message. And sometimes you might find that really, really annoying. But look, the truth is Google pretty much knows everything about you. I'm, I'm sure Cam will probably uh, you know, reiterate on that. But um, I think it's really important to um, serve your ad to clients when the decision is not made straight away. You know, there's lots of criteria where people shop around. Someone comes to your website, they might go to your competitor's page. You want your ad to come up one more time just to basically give them that offer. And don't keep repeating the same message. Perhaps you could you know, allude to one of your uh, unique selling points that we are open seven days or basically go to your point of difference saying that we could do this better and basically come up with a case study or something like that. So don't think of your marketing as just a one page and driving traffic to the same page. Make it interesting. Think about how people actually would uh, you know, digest the information. Display marketing, well, that's really remarketing, only it's actually served to a specific audience. So you can actually say, okay, we'd like to serve our ads specifically to you know, uh, parents in Brisbane over a certain age and basically over a certain time. So, the targeting becomes really, really precise. And then you can pick and choose to say, okay, I want people to see my ads on this particular YouTube channel. So you can actually nominate a YouTube channel of someone really, really popular and see your ads. So the targeting criteria becomes really, really, uh, really good. And the whole idea with display marketing, it actually is a lot much, much cheaper than uh, search advertising. I'd probably say about 70% cheaper. So really, really cool. Now, um, this is just um, one of the slides, I guess. And, our, um, our client convincing solicitor is the number two ad. So this is a typical example of a search ad. But really what we want to allude there, uh, to there is basically the open seven days because that's a really, really big point and a quote bid guarantee. So those two points really, really stand out. And uh, this particular campaign goes really, really well. So this is one of the top campaigns in the country. Um, and look, 
it, it's fairly complex, but really what you want is you want to take up that real estate with the right message, not just have anything in there, but re be really, really selective of what you put in there. One of the things that we um, got the client to do is actually put together an offer of free contract review, which a lot of co um, convenience places do. Um, look, conveniencing could be tricky, but a lot of the time, if you don't ask, you don't really like, get to find out exactly what they do. So free contract review is what everybody does. For some reason, no one puts it in their advertising. I mean, would it be nice to get a contract and basically get all the, all the answers for free? This is, a really nice, um, uh, this is a really nice process that gets them a lot of sales. Um, in terms of display advertising or remarketing, you might have seen something like this. You go to a page, there is an article about a particular advertiser, and then suddenly all the ads are all over the shop. So news.com.au also runs um, Google display ads. And uh, there's an article about Aldi there. So all they've done is just dominated over the whole thing. So suddenly you're using another, another website or another credibility source to basically broadcast your brand. And if your brand is fairly strong, I'd certainly advertise uh, investing time and money into this. YouTube advertising. YouTube is actually a combination of uh, display and YouTube itself. So let's see if this actually works. So this is a display ad over here. And as I said, you can target people specifically by their interest, gender, location, heaps of other things as well. And um, I think it's really, really powerful because you can uh, make it specific to the subject of the actual video. And um, there's another display ad right there as well. So there's actually two. In terms of YouTube ads, uh, there's one and the, the actual video itself. So you've got quite a lot of real estate. When you come to YouTube, you might not realize, but I'd say 60% of what you see is actually advertising real estate. Really, really cool stuff. In terms of traffic source breakdown, as I said, um, in terms of search, we'd go uh, for that strategy as initial visit. And we find that's the highest converting point or point of engagement because really the person has made the time to put the query in there and what they get is, is basically, as we call, conscious browsing. Remarketing is great for upsells or re-engaging people for, for, to, let's say, get them to come back or you know, take action. And display, we find that uh, engagement might not be as great, but your brand gets broadcasted across so many people and the traffic is fairly cheap. You can get you know, clicks as five cents per click, really, really cheap stuff. So this is the way I basically approach it. Okay, let's talk about results. It's very clear to um, identify you know, some, some goals when it comes to advertising because a lot of the time people say, hey, I've got 500 bucks, I wanna just advertise with that. We've got, a, um, we've got a Google AdWords income calculator in terms of we wanna put figures that the clients give us and be able to generate the sort of return that they're gonna get. So taking into consideration things like conversion rates, the cost per click and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'll, share, I'll share that. Um, Everywhere doesn't mean that um, you know you have to rank number one. Set some goals because over time those goals will actually change, and you'll you'll be refining that. Um, effective impression share. Google actually tracks to see exactly how many people uh, you reach with your ad. So let's say if you nominate a budget of let's say a thousand dollars a month, it actually shows you, based on your keywords and everything, what the percentage of people uh, could actually see your ads in total. So let's say if you get forty percent, you could potentially crank up your, crank up your budget to see. Um, to get your ad actually viewed by everybody else. So it's really, really cool. And for a lot of people, especially, especially uh, that are you know, publicly listed uh, companies, it actually means a lot. So impression share is all about you know, dominating the market. Improve cost per lead or conversion. Um, I think um, that's probably a major one. And a lot of you guys probably don't know how much it's costing you to get a client. You know, if you do a service-based business, you really need to track how much you spend on advertising and what it's costing you to get a call or an inquiry. Because a lot of the time, you might take things for granted. And really, every lead has got a cost to it. Um, building a list. Now, how many of you do email marketing? Hands up. Oh, quite a few. Great. How many of you get business out of it? A hmm, couple more hands. OK, cool. Well, building a list is essential, uh, especially if you get inquiries or if you get people coming through to you. And look, you've got to do it in a holistic, well, uh, holistic way. You can't just start bombarding people with emails once they submit an inquiry through. But having said that, you can send an inquiry 
uh, responds to an inquiry saying, you know, thank you for your message. Um, we will get back to you in 24 hours. In fact, I find that businesses that do that get a much higher conversion rate because half the time people are not sure what actually happened to that inquiry. Did it actually come through? And uh, you know, did it actually work? I mean, look, I, I, must, I must confess, uh, you know, the, the Google um, um, support that we got for this was, was great, but the actual uh, landing page setup could have been done a little bit better because when you guys registered, I don't think any of you got a confirmation saying that you've registered until you got our email. So. There's a little thing right there, and look, it pops up here, uh, here and again, and I guess there's just some feedback for Cameron and his team to improve processes in the long run. Um, working around seasonal trends. I think that's really, really important. Um, being reactive. Um, An ability to grow your business. I think it's a very important goal. I mean, what would it mean to get you know, 10 more jobs? Doesn't mean that you can hire another person. Doesn't mean that you could invest into another infrastructure. You really need to be able to identify those goals and see what they actually mean to you. And as I said, you, you gotta have something basic and then basically translate that into something more tangible. Testing and measuring. Well, Google Analytics, uh, I think that's uh, probably every business owner's best friend. How many of you actually look at uh, the Google Analytics regularly? Yeah, a couple of people. If you don't look at it, I strongly recommend you check it out. And I'll show you a couple of um, key pages that you probably should visit pretty much straight away. It's very important specifically if you want to do A-B split testing. Now, there's plenty of tools that you can use. Um, Google Analytics has got experiments, which allows you to set up quite easily. And uh, look, you can easily find someone who can basically help you out with this. Um, setting up goals, so if someone basically filling out your forms, making calls, and all that sort of stuff. The key metrics I would definitely uh, recommend looking at is obviously visitors, traffic sources for those visitors, your audiences, so who are those people? Are they male, female, age, all that sort of stuff? And you get a nice breakdown of that information. And obviously conversion rate per traffic source as well. Because a lot of people go, okay, well my website converts at 5%, that's it, game over. You might not realize that you know, Google AdWords might be converting at 7%, but your Facebook might not be converting altogether, and all the numbers are skewed. So this is a typical graph, and I'm not sure if you can see it due to resolution, but basically this is a uh, source medium um, uh, report where we basically look at each of the source and medium, and we've got the conversion tracking enabled, so we can see exactly how each of the sources is converting. So really easy to set up. Um, all you really need to do is just install some success code on your thank you page. So Someone comes to your website, fills out a form, and ends up on success um, page or thank you page, as it's called, as well. So that thank you page will have that goal code. And this is the only way that actually is getting calculated. Um, if you're running an online store if, and if you want to track sales, this is actually uh, one of our clients. And it's sad to see that they decided to do a website upgrade and didn't tell us about it. Um, you know, that, that million bucks a month uh, revenue could have been a little bit higher. But basically, it's important to track your average uh, order value, your top products, and basically optimize the performance of that campaign. Because you know, with advertisers like that, the scale of things is huge. Website being offline for three days, well, means that you're losing money. Now, there's, there's many other things you can look at um, within Google Analytics, but I guess we probably need to put together another seminar to go through something like that. But um, in terms of you know, compressing this into the actual smart process, I wanted to give you some tips. First of all, you guys familiar with the Pareto principle or 80-20? Yes? Okay. So you know that 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts. That's just the way things are. And it's really important to identify those niches because, look, with a convincing solicitor example, they came to us three years ago as a general law firm basically wanting to do everything, and their budget was about a thousand bucks, which sounds substantial, but if you put a thousand bucks for a law firm where keywords are like 11 or 12 cents, per, uh, 12, 12 dollars a click, you basically wouldn't get much. You know, like 100 people come into the website. So the 80 20 principle that we advised them on was to pick a service that, that could easily turn around quickly and basically generate revenue. And for them, it was convincing. You know, while the whole process takes a while, they basically had a whole system to streamline the whole lot. So 
we convinced them to basically dedicate a thousand bucks just towards that. Now, these guys within the three years have basically, you know, quadrupled their business big time. They've hired people. Now they're basically a firm called Conveyancing Solicitors. So it, it's interesting how things change over time just by identifying those niches. And look, I strongly uh, recommend that you pick keywords that don't cover the, the entire business, but only, um, only focus on a, uh, a couple of particular things within your business. So, for example, um, you know, you could look at, uh, let's say, a roofing business, and Glenn over there uh, does uh, metal, metal roofing. And if you look at uh, the inquiries uh, coming for roofing, Brisbane, for example, there's a lot of inquiries, but specializing in metal roofing really cuts out a lot of the jitter. And this way, you can actually be an expert in what you do. So it helps you out in a number of ways. First of all, you don't need to reach everyone. You only need to appeal to your ideal audience, and then you becoming a big fish in a small pond as opposed to being like everybody else. So that's a simple example of how you can apply the 80-20 uh, principle to your business when it comes to digital marketing. Um, write good content. And I know you guys are either busy or sometimes maybe lazy to write content. Look, there's plenty of people around who can help, but I think it's important to have the right message. And look, writing isn't my, isn't my strength. This is why we employ people and we partner with people that can help us improve what we actually deliver to you guys. Um, keeping the pro process simple. Don't overcomplicate things. And I know sometimes you go, OK, well, this works well. I want to do that. Just try to sort of take a step back. And look, if you don't believe me, maybe ask your potential clients or survey your past clients and ask them exactly where they struggle within your process. You know, what could be done better? Doing feedback uh, forms and basically getting testimonials from people really opens up a number of things. Um, diversify your traffic sources. Look, as much as I love Google AdWords and we do that for our own business, um, I think that you need to have at least three strategies in terms of driving traffic. Uh, personally, I'd recommend looking at doing uh, you know, Google AdWords as search, email marketing, and then perhaps you could do something like Facebook advertising. Look, all I'm trying to say is don't, don't put all your eggs in one basket because when you rely on the service too much, um, it, there might be a seasonal trend or there might be a bit of a change that will really you know, ch affect things for you. Um, you must con consider the user environment, so mobile versus desktop. I mean, I've seen hundreds of campaigns where a service is emergency, uh, of emergency nature, but they don't have a mobile website. So, for example, you, you, got a, you got an emergency electrician, for example. Like, if someone's got a power outage at their place, how the hell on earth are they going to find you? Like, the question for you guys. The only way is actually to jump on the mobile phone and, and Google for you. So you've got to be a little bit practical in terms of the nature of, the, of those inquiries. And look, if you don't want to make those assumptions, jump onto your Google AdWords and have a look at the um, device breakdown. You'll see that a high percentage of your traffic will be coming from mobile devices. Make sure you build an email list. And I've already covered that. But look, easiest thing to do is to sell to your past clients. If you do an email blast to your past database, even to say Merry Christmas, they w these people will actually remember about you and ch a big chance that they'll actually come back. We find that every time we send something out, we either get referrals or clients. That's just the way it's worked for us. And uh, by all means, track, track your return on investment. I find a lot of the time people just you know, take it for granted. They nominate a budget and you know, things change. They don't really track to see what it's costing them per lead. Make sure you do that. And uh, Google Analytics, it's free. It's there. Log in, have a look. Maybe identify a few screens that you want to check out regularly. There's really some gold um, things in there. All right, um, that's pretty much all from me. Thank you very much.